Welcome. My name is Carl Dannerberger, Professor of Turfgrass Science at The Ohio State University. The topic of this presentation is the Heathland era and the coming of age of golf course architecture. Heathland refers to an area south and west of London, England, where the terrain is gently rolling. The vegetation is primarily heather, rhododendrons, scotch firs, and pine trees. The plants and trees mentioned grow well on acidic soils. Besides the acidic soil conditions, the soil profiles were sandy, very much similar in many ways to the Lynxland. The soils in the Heathland area are favorable for good drainage and the growth of fescue grasses. In stark contrast to some of the inland areas of Scotland and England, where golf courses have failed due to poor design and poor soil and environmental conditions. The Heathland era denoted the beginnings of golf course architecture as a profession. A few of the architects that emerged during the Heathland period are described further. Willie Park Jr. became an impactful figure during this period. He was the son of Willie Park Sr., who was an accomplished golfer. Willie Park Sr., shown here in this picture, won the first British Open in 1860 over old Tom Morris. He went on to win three more Opens in 1863, 1866, and 1875. Willie Park Sr. helped increase golf's popularity with challenge matches against the likes of old Tom Morris, Willie Dunn, and Alan Robertson. Willie Park Jr. was an accomplished golfer in his own right, winning the Open in 1887 and 1889. He was an accomplished putter, which was good because he did not strike the ball particularly well. He wrote the first book on golf by a golf pro professional entitled The Game of Golf in 1896. The book also outlines his design philosophy, which includes starting with some easy holes, having all hazards visible, and allowing for the ability to run a ball up to the green. He also wrote the book entitled The Art of Putting in 1920. The value of this book in the hardcover original edition runs from $600 to $1,500. Willie Park Jr. ran the family golf club making business too. And with golf expanding, started an export business of golf equipment. He also designed a reported 170 golf courses. Three notable courses in the Heathland area were Hunter Crombie, Sunningdale, and Knott's. Hunter Crombie and Sunningdale I will mention further. Willie Park Jr. purchased Hunter Crombie Manor and the surrounding 900 acres and built the golf course shown here. The course incorporates two design concepts that are credited to Willie Park Jr. Extreme sloping greens and a lack of sand bunkers. In their place are grassy bunkers. This photograph of the eighth green shows the green slope. Willie Park Jr. was credited as the first designer to put slope into greens. For a golfer to get the ball back to the pin placement, on this three to four foot high plateau on the back of the green would normally require a pitch and run. To fly it back there would be almost impossible except for the best golfers. Willie Park Jr. also installed grass bunkers or natural bunkers that had not been done previously. This is the fourth hole. Willie Park Jr. designed the old course of Sunningdale in 1900. Just wanted to show a few pictures of Sunningdale. Sunningdale is probably the most famous Heathland style golf course. I would mention at this point, besides the old course by Willie Park Jr., Sunningdale also has a new course designed by Harry S. Colt in 1923. The pictures I show in the subsequent pictures are of both the old and new course. Notice the terrain. The trees are firs and pines and the heather throughout the course.
Harry Shapelin Colt, or H.S. Colt, is the father of British golf course architecture. His mark was the creation of inland courses, Heathland courses, comparable to the Lynx courses. He originally studied law at Cambridge University, where he was also on the golf team. He became secretary of Sunningdale from 1901 to 1913. H.S. Colt's first layout was the Rye Golf Club in East Sussex, England, just outside of London. Similar to his later design of Swinley Forest Golf Club, both these courses fit into Colt's ideas that a course should blend into its natural surroundings. A unique characteristic of the courses is that both do not have a true par 5. The courses measure around 6,000 to 6,300 yards. At Swinley Forest, Colt laid out the par threes and then the par fours. It has been said that the mixture of par three holes, along with long and short par four holes, gives the course a type of natural rhythm or flow. Colt's courses usually reflect a mastery of scale small greens at the end of narrow, winding fairways, tees set back behind modest stretches of rough. This is a golf hole on the new course at Sunningdale that Colt designed. Harry Colt trained a number of golf course architects that would become widely known. C.H. Allison would serve as a partner for Colt for over 20 years while Alistair McKenzie got his start with Colt. Some of the first associated with Colt include being the first architect that was not a professional golfer, using drawing boards and preparing tree planting plans for his golf courses. William Herbert Fowler was an accomplished cricket player who started to play golf later in his career and became quite competent competing in the open. He was rather an eccentric golfer being described as he puts sometimes with a driving iron, but often uses a mallet, which looks like a sandwich box with a stick stuck through the middle. Fowler is famous for designing Walton Heath in the early 1900s. The course opened to high acclaim, more than actually Sunningdale at the time. He too believed that a golf course should be natural and follow the lay of the land. Fowler was not a famous architect, but captured many of the traits characteristic of architects of that time of the Heathland era. In conclusion, although this picture of the 18th hole at Pebble Beach Golf Club does not fit this presentation, I show it because if it were not for Herbert Fowler, it would be a 379-yard par-4, not the famous par-5 as it is known today.